In Creo Parametric, the shell feature has a few interesting options that I'll admit I don't fully understand them, but I can show them to you. Here I have a part that I basically duplicated from the information from PTC's help section. Let's see how we can use the shell command on this part. I will click on shell. And if I go to the references tab, you'll see that the removed surfaces collector is automatically active. Let me select the surface and I'm going to go with a thinner thickness. I'm going to make it kind of a thin walled part. And you can see right now we are getting shelled around those different holes. Let's go to the options tab. Here we can exclude surfaces. You can either click in this field or you can right mouse click and hold and then choose exclude surfaces. And then I can select the surfaces for the holes to exclude them. And this is probably what I want. Where it gets interesting is when we start applying these other different options down here with chamfered surfaces. So for example, I've got this little feature out here. There's some chamfers sort of on the inside. Those are concave chamfers. And then we have these chamfers on the outside, which are convex. Let's add those inside chamfers to the excluded surfaces. I'm holding down the control key and I'm picking this surface over here. And what you'll notice is it added geometry sort of to the inside, this little point over here, which you don't see over on the other side. Let me hold down the control key and select this surface as well. And again, you see we get it sort of filled in because it is extending the inner surfaces and it's preventing the shell from penetrating solid at concave corners. Let's change this from concave corners to convex corners. And when I do that, you'll notice that now we have penetration of the solid. We can see through the part where those chamfers used to be. Let's change the option now from extend inner surfaces to extend excluded surfaces. When, oh yeah, one other thing, when I change that, you'll notice that the posts came back and the posts are now filled in. To show you the effect of that, let me change back to concave for a second. And so again, we have it getting squared off over here, but we no longer have the whole sort of like we what I wanted when I added them to the excluded surfaces. But again, right now I am going to change to convex. And now we have posts. We don't only have holes there. We have posts where we used to have those shelled holes and we can see through the geometry over here. All right, so now that we have convex corners selected, let's change from extend inner surfaces to extend excluded surfaces. So now those posts go away and we have the holes back, but we can see through the geometry over here. Let's go back to concave corners. And here we have them shelled around the holes and we've got the posts being shelled as well. Let's go to extend inner surfaces. And in this particular situation, we have the post. I'm gonna hit the check mark in order to create this feature. Let's say that I didn't want the sort of like posts over here. I've got a situation where I'm getting interpenetration or penetration of the solid and getting geometry on the holes. One way that you can deal with that is reordering the different features in the model. Let's start off by, in this case, I am going to delete this original shell and I'm going to insert before the pattern of the holes. Here in this case, I can create my shell feature. I know that my remove surfaces collector is active. Let's select the top surface to remove. Let's go with a much thinner wall. And in this case, if I go to the options tab for excluded surfaces, I will pick this surface over here and this surface over here and we get the point if I change to extend excluded surfaces. In this way, it's really not making any more of a difference than what I would initially gotten if I hadn't excluded those two individual surfaces. But I guess the point is if you 
exclude those surfaces and then extend the inner surfaces. It's a way of getting this geometry over here and also avoiding the situation where you could end up getting gaps in your model. But again, I can right click and remove. And now I'm just getting a thin walled part. All right, let's hit the check mark out of there. And now that I've got the shell in the model, I can grab the insert here arrow down to the bottom. And this way we get the holes and we don't have any of that wacky behavior of getting either posts or shelled walls around those different holes. Okay, let's go back. Let's take a look at a, another example with those convex chamfers. I'm going to right click on the shell feature and delete it. And let's go back to insert mode. I'm going to drag the bar up above pattern one. And be aware that this bar for dragging and entering insert mode, that was a new addition in Creo Parametric 6.0. If you are in Creo Parametric 5.0 or earlier, you'll have a little green arrow, I believe it is, and it says insert here, and you drag that around. All right, let's take a look at the convex corners. I will click the shell command. Let's remove the top surface again and change it to a thinner value. And in this particular case, now I'm going to go to the Options tab. Let's click in the Exclude Surfaces collector. And I'm going to pick this surface and this surface. And in this particular situation, with the default values of Extend Inner Surfaces and Concave Corners, you'll notice now we're getting penetration of the solid. Let's change the radio button here to Convex Corners. And now we're getting sort of the point geometry, the extension of the surfaces on sort of like the outside of the model over here. So that's how we can prevent the penetration. I'm going to leave the radio button for convex corner selected. If I choose extend excluded surfaces, well, then we're going to end up with that same penetration of the geometry. So again, let's go back to extend inner surfaces. And with convex corners, we're getting the point. If I go to concave corners, we get penetration of the geometry. So once again, I can hit the check mark and you can see the resulting geometry. I can use the bar and drag it down to bring the pattern of holes back. So again, those are just some of the interesting different ramifications of using some of the controls for the surface extension and preventing shell from penetrating solid when you use convex chamfers or concave chamfers as the excluded surfaces. Personally, I don't do a whole lot of plastic enclosures or use the shell feature that much. So if this is something that you use a lot, please let me know in the comments about your different use cases. And one last message. It turns out only about 20% of the people who watch my videos actually subscribe to them. So please do me a favor, subscribe to the channel so you can be informed when new videos are available. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much.